feel like you're dating someone that's playing games with you? Well, in this video, I will share with you 10 tips on how you can play the player at his own game. This video will include pickup lines, body language, conversations, and manipulative strategies that men use to get their own way. Hello, my name is Greta Berishita. I'm dating and relationship coach for women. For the awesome high value woman secrets, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload new videos every Sunday, 6 p.m. London time. And ladies, just before I will share with you those 10 strategies and how you can handle them, don't forget to take my free self-awareness test to find out are you a woman of high value or low value, which I will drop down in the video description box below. And if you like my merch, chase goals and not the drama, you can always get it in my YouTube store. And without further ado, let me share with you those 10 ways on how you can play him at his own game. So I wanted to share with you a couple of pickup lines that I found in the book called The Mystery Matter. I actually again experienced them too as I reflected back on the guys that I met before. So the strategy is used to give a woman a negative comment. Sometimes it's disrespect, sometimes it's a tease, sometimes it's banter. And I think this is where a lot of people go wrong. I do personally believe that bantering and teasing can be fun. However, it needs to be done in later stages of their relationship, not straight away, because a lot of people do not get um, bantering or teasing, and it's just not their thing. Therefore, when you go with bantering or teasing straight away, but a woman, a lot of times you can really lose a girl very quickly. The other approaches include pure disrespect or to kind of show a woman that you're very comfortable with her, implying that you're not trying to impress her because you're not that into her, in, in order to create an intrigue so she would chase you. Anyway, <laughs> one of the strategies that I actually experienced before and only when I read the book I realized that actually this is from the book, so I remember this was happened very long time ago. I was dancing salsa, I was in a salsa club and this guy approached me and as he was talking to me, he said to me, did you just spat on me? I remember feeling a little bit embarrassed because I was thinking like, no, I didn't, did I? And um, I kind of pulled back and stopped talking to him because I started to feel embarrassed. In the book by Mystery, it literally says to the guys, when you're talking to a girl, tell her this line to balance her out so her value drops and she kind of feels like she needs to make it up to you or she's gonna pursue you. Uh, which I find really weird because I personally just got embarrassed and I just kind of pulled away from the guy and, and like disappeared on him. So anyway, the other strategy that is recommended by the book is to kind of show you that a guy is comfortable with you and he's not trying to impress you is to blow your nose next to the girl. So if you're in a car or you're at his house and he takes his napkin and he literally tries to blow his nose and he does it in a kind of gross manner, he's kind of basically showing that I don't care what you think because I feel comfortable with you because I'm not trying to impress you. Get the whole I feel comfortable with you, however, it is still gross. Kind of lose a bit of attraction for the guy because it's, it's, a, it's a gross thing to do. Like, I don't know how you were raised girls, but I don't even blow my nose in front of my parents. I actually remove myself to the room if I need to really blow my nose. It's just a gross thing to do. I don't feel like I'm looking attractive doing it. So why would I do it next to even my family members or my friends or the guy, let's say I like. I mean, imagine this, you're sitting with a guy in a car and now because you are trying to come across as a challenge, you're kind of trying to give him a vibe that I'm not trying to impress you. And your armpits are unshaved, you have unshaved legs, you know, maybe you didn't put that perfume on because you're not trying to impress him or you start to burp or fart or anything like that. I mean, come on. 
I get it that you're not trying to impress him. Yet, I think instead of trying to come across as a challenge to a guy, he's just gonna start losing attraction for you as he's just gonna think you don't have the basic manners. Another one that I have seen a lot it happens in the clubs, it happens when guys hang out with each other. If one of the guys is approaching you, his friend a lot of times will have his back and will say what a great guy he is. Kind of bring his friend's social value up and to convince you that you can trust him. Ladies, if you want to know are you dating a great guy or not, the only way to find out is to take things slowly with him and observe his actions. Just because his friend whispered into your ear, this is a great guy, it does not mean anything. Take things slow, observe his actions and find out for yourself. Is he a great guy or not? Number two, how nice guys or geeky guys try to get girls into bed is they have a strategy which is described in a book and I actually kind of agree with the strategy because I think it does require quite a lot of investment from a guy's side and um, it does make sense because guys who are a bit shy and nerdy and geeky the nice guys the not so confident ones that cannot get girls easily they do need to invest into a woman a lot so she bonds with him and starts to see value in him so the strategy that we use is called conversation connection intimacy foreplay and sex so with conversation, he approaches you, he pretends that he doesn't like you, which doesn't make sense to me because you approaching me, you showing me that you like me as you're making the first moves. It doesn't matter how you're trying to approach me with negativity or positivity, you're still pursuing. It's only logical. Anyway, the first step a nice guy needs to use is conversation. So he might call you a lot to talk to you a lot in order to bond with you. Or ladies, a lot of pen pals, what they do, they text you a lot and ask you many questions in order to bond with you. When you bond as a woman, you invest a lot emotionally and when you invest a lot emotionally, you feel very connected to a guy. And ladies, we connect a lot through talking and sharing. Men connect more to having fun together rather than talking and sharing. So keep that in mind that you talking to him a lot is not necessarily gonna make him bond to you, but you will definitely bond with him. The other strategy that men use is to build comfort. So we take you out many places, which is nice. Then you build connection, intimacy, foreplay, and of course it leads to a guy's bed. This strategy, I would say it's quite a nice strategy because it's just a proper strategy on how to get to know somebody and bond with another person. Even though it's called a strategy to get a woman into bed, there is still a lot of investment from a guy's side happening. So even though he's calling it a strategy, he's still falling for you at the same time because he's investing into you. In my opinion, this is much better than some guys giving you a couple of compliments, throwing in some breadcrumbs, and then saying, come on over, I'll cook for you tonight. So ladies, observe his actions, not his words, take things slow, get to know him. If you're behaving in a smart and clever way, if you're actually being high value, a guy that's using this type of approach for a relationship, it could actually take you somewhere nice. Number three strategy that guys use in order to create their social value, they keep their exes lingering around. So you know the way some guys break up with a girl but they just stay friends and he still throws her breadcrumbs, he still kind of keeps her on a leash but maybe someday we're gonna go get back together or he starts to date a new girl and then throws in well this ex or that ex or another ex. So the idea behind this type of strategy to show your social value and these type of guys think that the more drama, the more chaos, the more exes, the more any kind of woman we have in their lives, the more social value they will have. 
I personally think this is a very cheap approach. I think a man like that looks like somebody who doesn't respect himself or others, somebody that's really immature, somebody who doesn't set boundaries with people, somebody that is enjoying a toxic life. When it comes to a guy having social value or a guy being a catch, I don't know about you ladies, but when a guy approaches me, I already can tell does he actually have options or he doesn't have options. You talk to the guy for five minutes and you already know what type of options he has. You talk to that same guy for 10 minutes and you already know what he does with those options that he has. Number four, what is recommended in the book is says don't buy her a drink. If you buy her a drink, it's not too bad, but it's better if you don't buy her a drink. And the best is if she offers to buy you a drink. I think girls who fall for this type of stuff are the ones that don't have standards or any kind of expectation from a man. Number five, it says make everything not a big deal. So for example, if he is approaching you and he is telling you, let's enjoy the moment, come on over tonight, life is short, to live it to the fullest, let's just have sex, he's gonna make it sound like not a big deal. Because the less of a big deal he makes, the easier it is for him to get you into his bed. So it is recommended for men to use not a big deal approach all the time with you. So kissing is not a big deal. Sleeping together is not a big deal. Him having plenty of unfinished business with exes, not a big deal. Him having a child is not a big deal. Him having lots of children with different women is not a big deal. Everything what's toxic or chaotic in his life will be made not a big deal. Ladies, you can have some fun with this one. If he says it's not a big deal, you go like, yes, of course, it's not a big deal. If you're not gonna fall for his little manipulative strategies, when the situation comes across where you're talking to another guy and he's overreacting because now he's got feelings for you and he's getting jealous, you can tell him, you need to control your emotions, babe. It's not a big deal. Number six, the game that he will try to play on you in order to keep you insecure so you would chase him. He might come to approach you and he might say something fun, he's gonna be flirty and charming and then he'll say something, oh, I really have to go. In order for you to make that move to hold the conversation for longer and be like, no, no, don't go. When somebody comes in with a high note and straight after the high note, we say, I have to leave, a lot of times it can be a game so you would hold on to that person and you would kind of try and make them stay. That way you give them power and you make them feel like they are really wanted. What I would recommend you for you ladies to do, the first time a guy says, I have to go, you show him that you respect his time and you let him go. So he says, babe, I have to go. You say, well, okay, have a good trip home, bye. Number seven, he will try to flirt with your friend to keep you interested. Let me share, let me share a story with you ladies. Me and my friend, this was maybe three years ago, we went to this posh club in London and there was this tall guy that kind of like checked me out and we had like a little eye contact and then him and his friends approached us and we bought us a drink and then this really tall guy started to talk to my friend my friend is really really short and he starts to talk to her and i'm kind of left there standing in a way like a little bit by myself so i kind of try to engage in a conversation because now i feel like the third wheel even though originally that tall guy made the eye contact with me so i kind of feel a bit like weird because i was like oh i thought you liked me but now i'm excluded from this conversation and um, i'm feeling like the third wheel and i'm thinking anyway if you like her you like her it is what it is but I tried to engage. I don't want to be the third wheel. 
and the guy turns around to me and he shuts me down. He says something off, he says something disrespectful and he just shuts me down. Just standing there thinking, okay, that well, was so rude, I want to leave, you know? Why did you got us a drink if you're so disrespectful to us, you know, like I want to leave? And within a couple of seconds, like maybe 30 seconds or a minute, my shorter friend she whispers into my ear and she says, this guy is very rude, I want to leave. And I whisper back to her, I said, he was rude to me too, I want to leave as well. And then as we both are holding these 20 pound strings, as these guys got for us, we decide to walk out on them as we are being disrespectful and rude. As I'm about to walk away, I kind of look at this tall guy again and say, you're just rude. And, and as we walking out, I can see that his face is a bit in a shock. Anyway, then there is another group of guys who approach us as well and we do exactly the same thing. We become rude and disrespectful within a minute or so of approaching us. So me and my friend, we decide to leave a club because we like, okay, this club is full of rude guys. Anyway, now that I'm reading this book, I can see the strategies that these guys were using on us, which did not work with us. So for example, when uh, me and the tall guy made the eye contact, the tall guy approached my shorter friend to make me purposely insecure that he's not after me, that he's after my friend. So I would start to pursue him. He is now a challenge. I tried to interrupt, he shut me down to bring my value even more down, thinking that this will make me talk to him more as now he will be a bigger challenge which I just found completely disrespectful and, um, as I just saw him as a man who has no manners and who seems to be in his 40s and doesn't even know how to approach or speak to a woman. <laughs> Number eight, the body language. So it says when you are a guy and you're approaching a woman, be ready that you're gonna have to, have to lead the conversation at least 90% of the time. This is ladies where you can sit chill and enjoy yourself and let him take the lead. But then as he's leading the conversation, he's gonna be observing your body language. Do you like him or not? And these are the signals that guys pay attention to. If he walks closer to you, if he's in your personal space, are you stepping back? Are you moving from him? He steps back and starts walking a little bit this way or that way. Do you mirror him? Do you follow him? If he's standing and he has his legs crossed, do you mirror him and cross your legs too? Ladies, when you mirror a guy, you're actually indicating to him that you like him. When he gets close to you and when you don't step back, you're giving him a green light showing that I'm okay with you being in my personal space. I think when it comes to body language, it's good to mirror a guy here and there sometimes or like let him get into your personal space sometimes if you do like him. However, you have to be careful not to mirror him every single time, not to follow him everywhere he goes or worse, when he is leading the conversation, you take over the conversation and you start to lead the conversation. As when you do these things, you're basically signaling to him that he already has you, that you're happy to take a lead from now on. What will happen as a result, he will step back and from now on, you will become the pursuer. The strategy number nine. So this is again, as we say in the book, the field environment. So the field environment usually is a club. And this happened to me when I was in my early 20s. I remember I was in a club with a couple of my friends and again, I felt the eye contact from the guy. And this is another thing that guys need to understand. When you are a woman, you know literally which guy likes you and which guy doesn't. Because men, they do like you, they check you out. You can feel the look, you can sense the look. So as I am with my friends in this club, again, I'm feeling the look from this guy coming towards me. 
and then I can see him slowly making a move towards my friends. And in my mind, I'm still like in my early 20s, so I don't know the game that well. And I was thinking, no way, he's gonna approach my friends that he didn't look at at all to get to me. And this is exactly what happened. He slowly was walking towards my friends. He approached my friends. He made them smile. He made them laugh. Kind of totally excluded me. I would say maybe even ignored me. But when the night was ending, he offered to walk me home. He offered to get me a taxi home. And this is just so silly because as a woman, you can sense, you can feel, you can see who likes you, who you have a chemistry with. So when you play all these silly little games, you just come across as somebody that plays games, as somebody that you cannot trust. And then eventually, when this type of guy approaches you, you actually end up having all these walls up for him because you saw him playing games, so you're losing trust in this guy. And then you make it kind of nearly impossible for this guy that was originally into you to get to you. Number 10, ladies, when you know how to be high value, when you can read through his game, when you know how to handle him, you can get a guy like that to fall for you easily as you're gonna be the one that he cannot play, you're gonna be the one that he cannot read. However, if he's such a big believer in toxicity, chaos, drama, putting your value and worth down. Even if he falls for you, even if he loves you, it is very likely that he will stay the same confused, toxic guy. Unless eventually he will decide to grow up, mature and change, but it has to be his decision and not yours. Ladies, sometimes we see in these guys potential and sometimes we go into a relationship thinking that we can change the guy. Please don't do it. The most that you can do if you have a lot of self-control and self-discipline is friends on him. And then observe, is he improving in life just by being friends with him? But that's literally about it. So ladies, these were my 10 ways on how to handle a player. If you liked this video, please press like. Let me know in the comments below what did you think. Join Brenna's High Value Women School where we are all in the same boat, learning how to be a woman of high value and bring out the best in our men. Follow me on my Instagram. My Instagram is called Ladies Relationship Coach. And for one-on-one -on -one group coaching or coaching with a member of my team, book me through my website, which is called gretebrigida.com. And if you would like to know how to stay attractive via text, games men play on women, how to control your emotions, how to get your ex back, how to love yourself, or perhaps you have a little hobby that you would like to make into an online business, I have all of these videos for sale on my website called gretebrigida.com. Thank you so much for watching. Kisses from Dorset. Mwah.